All right, ladies and gentlemen, before I play you this video, keep in mind I was trying to do this video by myself, filming by myself. The way the car was parked that day, the sun was glaring, so it is definitely not an optimal video, but it is helpful. So take advantage of it. I show you step by step how to remove the dashboard, the bolts that are necessary. What's up guys? I know this video has been a long time coming, but we're finally going to do it and we're going to remove the dash. We're going to remove the upper cluster and try to figure out what's going on, why my fuel gauge is inverting all the time. So the first thing you want to do, pop the hood, 10 mil socket. Let's take the battery off. And remember, when you, every time you take the battery off, you need to put in your radio passcode key. So if you don't know it, go to the dealer, contact your dealer so you have something to listen to once that's done now that we're done here let's move on to the inside <clears throat> you guys are only going to need two simple tools here we need a flathead and a phillips so the first thing we're going to do inspect what the hell is going on there's one screw i got one screw right over here on the bottom driver's side we're going to take that off with a phillips and we got another phillips screw on the opposite end gonna go ahead and just pull towards you okay that piece is not coming off and there you go bring make sure you bring your steering wheel all the way down Apologize guys for the sun. So a side note, you should probably put it in D1 when you before you disconnect the battery. Otherwise you want to prop pry this little pry this little thing off. Don't lose it. Then you're gonna, as you can see, you're gonna press on this and shift your lever. Just like I just did. So pre press this, shift the lever. That way you get more room underneath here. Speaking of underneath here, once again, <coughs> you're gonna pry this little cover up on top. turn on the flash here huh but once you pop that little cover on this is what holds your radio so you got one screw here and there should be a second screw there so I probably messed around with this back in the day all right guys so we ended up using a little socket with an extension to get that bolt off because it was it looked like it was stripping this is probably going to be the hardest part of the process because you can't really see it. If it wasn't for the camera showing me where the screw is, if I put my head under there, I can't visually see it. So just don't lose the screw. All right, so that bolt is off. Like I said, there should be a bolt here. Uh, mine's not here. I probably messed with this back in the day. So now you got another screw you have to worry about. Start pulling apart your dash again. Pull towards you a little bit. Pull towards you. As you can see, the radio already is coming off. 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my flathead, put a little bit of a cloth under it, pop it under here, under the dash. Okay, and we're gonna lift it as you can see. The dash is a little lifted. Pull up. There you go, pull up and back towards you. Be careful here, Not try not to scratch anything. There are some wires that connect to the back. You just wanna disconnect. There you go, and now we can remove this piece, set it down. So this is where we are right now. If you just need to get to the cluster here, you may. Fortunately, we need to get to the top portion here, so there's a few more steps. We're gonna pull the radio, pull the radio forward a little bit, and there's a screw here. There's a screw here, right? Not the white one, the black one. And there's a screw here. So we gotta take all those off. One. Now that that's loose, we can pry the top. <clears throat> Just pull, pull up, as you can see, pull up. up is the best method here and there you go we're gonna pull that out you can see this is where we are all right guys that's the cluster that's the inside of the vehicle so now there's just three bolts holding it one two and three once you remove those bolts just disconnect this wire that's in the back of it and your upper cluster will be removed now just to summarize there's two screws that were holding two screws holding this off you're gonna pop it off then there was there was one screw right over here you want to pop that off then you're gonna pop the little panel that's by the power outage, by the, by, by the power outlet, pop that little cover off. There's going to be two screws holding the radio into place. Once you get those off, you can pop this portion off, which is right here. You pull it up towards you. Make sure it disconnects from the radio here because it's going to be easier to pull back the radio. So the radio is just pulled back and then you disconnect three screws there. Or I'm sorry, we missed we missed this whole portion. So to get the top piece off, there's gonna be three screws holding it in. Disconnect, and that leaves us here. So let's take off the other screws here. I apologize guys I am trying to film and do this myself and I know the Sun is glaring which is not gonna be a great video but it is definitely gonna be usable for anyone looking to do this by themselves now that we remove the screws there you go just simply pull the cluster forward disconnect by pressing this button in and 
there you have it this is the upper cluster removal for 2006 to 2011 Honda Civic this particular model is a LX but this works the same for LX EX SIs and hybrids so this is the end result guys this literally while recording took me around 10 minutes so let's get to the bottom of this see why it's not working well this is with the cluster off this is the small little piece this is how it looks like this is the fuel gauge here this is temp gauge speedometer I mean, everything looks to be in good shape all the solders are tight everything looks well so guys so I got the cluster hooked back up put the battery back on I just want to turn it on and see what's going on with it here let's see if we can see fuel gauge is working good speedometer temperature everything looks to be well so guys like I said everything works good I tried moving around some of the parts there and it did not invert on me so it's it's really it's really a funky situation really tricky but you know I'm just gonna make sure everything's tight everything's good here we're gonna put it back on and if you see it's because I don't see nothing wrong I can't really f tackle one thing here to try to fix it so if it's still gonna be going and inverting I mean either just leave it drive it or buy a new upper gauge cluster to fix the issue and there you have it guys so far I have been driving the car for two days and believe it or not that light did not invert on me yet so I'm not sure if it was a loose connection somewhere but it's I'm not having it I'm happy I'll keep you guys updated